This is an example application showing how you might use webhooks to be able to copy data from one table into another. Kind of like sync in that if you add a record here, it'll be added here. If you add, delete a record, it'll be deleted. If you edit a record, it'll be edited. So uh, I don't have any information in the uh, contact table, nor do I have them in the contacts uh, because this mirror is the first, right? So let's go over and we'll add a contact. I won't fill out a lot of the information, um, but I'll just uh, put ABC New Company. Um, we'll use Tom Terrific, and he's president, and 222 Massachusetts Avenue, and we'll say it's from 617-555-1212. And that's all the information I'm going to put. But I'm going to click Save. Now, there's a behind the scenes, what's, what's happening is that there's a very similar to an email notification. We're using um, a webhook that gets triggered upon a saved record. And when something is changed on the same record, it shows up in the other table. And here's that same contact. And as you can see, uh, the, the data is, is the same as it was over here. Now, let's go change it. Notice it's 617-555-1212. Let's use grid edit this time. Now, a lot of people, this isn't considered a record change notification, especially if you're doing a whole bunch of them. So let's do uh, 603-777-7777. And let's add a new new one like Bob's, Bob's Bikes. And this is Bob... Prince, and he's the president at 289. Um, yeah, in grid edit, I don't have the, the fields here. But let's put a phone number in here, 603-555-1212. And let's click Save. So a couple things happened there, too. This one was updated to 7777, and then this record was added. So let's go over to the contacts mirror and see what happens. There, we've got this going here. So how did all of this, oh, one other thing we didn't do, which was delete. So let's uh, go back to this one. Um, I'm going to view and then come over and say, I would like to delete this record. Okay, now I've done a combination of things. Let's go over to contact mirrors, that one's gone. Uh, what's really exciting is if you take something like a bunch of contacts like this and copy it from a spreadsheet and import it into contacts, what's going to happen? Uh, so let's do that. We're going to import from a clipboard into contacts the following information. We'll make sure the columns align, company contact title, and we've got to an existing field, which is street. This one is city, this is state, this is postal code, and this is country, address country. Now let's see what other things here, phone, fax, mobile, email. So we're going to populate all these fields, import. So there were 100 records that were brought in here. So um, if I come over to contacts mirror right now, that should have generated all of them. Let's make sure that they're in here. They are. So in the background, the webhooks are firing. And if I click back over here now, we have 101 contacts. So it has uh, moved them from. And whether you're doing grid edit, multi-record, individual records, these webhooks um, work just fine for that. Let's take a look in the uh, contacts table where these are. Um, now, email notifications for a table are launched right here, and they're defined down here. We have three webhooks, and uh, so one of them is sensitive to when records are added to this table. One is sensitive to when modified, and one is sensitive to delete. Now, if I go into the add one, the conditions of it are very similar. You can see uh, the table I want to go to. It's going to be an API um, post or an API um, um, call call import from CSV. Well, where does the CSV come from? It actually looks at all the changes that have happened down below here. And we're invoking this repeat on and repeat off for these fields. And so each of the fields that we want 
to um, be tracking um, that change, we want this data to be brought in and then populated down into these FIDs, six, seven, eight, and these relate to which fields these are in the destination table. So where does all this come from? Um, well, if you um, open up or do a search for QuickBase API, um, Quick, let's go down here again, QuickBase API, we'll find uh, the API guide and if you um, look at the API call reference, there is something called import from CSV there. And if you scroll down, all the background on how this works and what it is is here, um, including the description of the fields that you want and whatever. But down here, you've got a sample request. And this is the component that we want to grab. So when we grab that, instead of having static text, which this is what it is, is what it's showing us, we put field values in. And since it's only named as the name of the field, what we'll do is put the begin and then the repeat and, and, and off. And that's, to be more um, exact about that, let's see where we are here. Yeah, there's the percent repeat on. Where can you find that? If you hover over this and go down, you'll find it way down at the bottom, I think. Percent on, percent off. It's in here someplace. Um, it allows you to iterate through each of the records that changed. Now, notice it's import by CSV. It's not when add record. The condition is under add record up above, but it's using this so that you can do it on one record or many records. Now, let me exit out of here for a second. Um, there's another webhook down here for edit, and it does something very similar. Whenever a record's modified, and that's the condition up above right here, um, go over to this table and do the import from CSV action, and you can see that it's doing the exact same thing. These are very fast to set up when you just copy one from the other. Now, the last one that I want to show you is delete. So it uses a different API in this scenario. Um, you still are using the repeat on and the repeat off. Here's your, here's your repeat um, here. Um, and you can also see it's using API purge record only when a record is deleted. And so, so there are a couple, a couple of other things here, and you can go out to the API to extract this information. But the user token, there, user tokens. You can use tickets if you want to, and you can use usernames and passwords if you want to. But QuickBase has this wonderful, wonderful feature called a user token, and you'll find it down, down here user tokens. So I've got a bunch of these user tokens and if I want to use one to do update records, which one am I using here? Um, I'm using the one webhooks mirroring. So there, that's the one that, I, uh, that I'm using. And you can create these user tokens um, by clicking on your name, clicking on your preferences, and uh, coming down here to manage user tokens, create your token and tell it which application you're going to use it for. It will then show up inside your application when you click on this here and scroll down. That way you don't have to use authentication uh, tickets that are, were traditionally done. Um, there's also, I've indicated here, an app token. That's a and many times people shut those off, so you, you can forego those if you happen to want to do that. But this uses uh, not the API import from CSV, but purge records because we can put a query in there and pretty much where it is, where field 34 equals the record ID. And so it repeat on and repeat off, and it iterates through any record that's deleted so that it will purge it. So that's a, a way of using webhooks in three different uh, scenarios to add, to update, and to delete records so that you can move data, very similar to how what Sync uh, is used for.